Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Shout out to you for tuning in. You are always appreciated. In this video, we are going to break down all the different machines shown in the real world of the Matrix universe from the original Man Machine War through the end of Revolutions. This does not include things like the interrogation bug from the first film because that scene occurred inside of the Matrix, so that particular mechanical bug is classified as a program and has no real world hardware to reference. For anyone who isn't sure about the difference between the green Matrix and the blue real world, you can check out the Matrix is not Inception video here on this channel to get all caught up. I'll leave links in the description box as well. And if this is your first time down here, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any future Yellow Pilled content. Let's start with a machine model from the real world that was built before the Matrix was even constructed. Zero One Ambassadors In the second Renaissance episodes of the Animatrix, we get to see the original Machine City which was named Zero One. Once Zero One was established, the machines attempted to make peace with humanity and petitioned to join the United Nations. During this period, they created android ambassadors with a humanoid appearance in an attempt to be accepted by the human leaders. The UN denied Zero One's entry and the mechanical diplomats were attacked by humans in the assembly hall. After the machines won the war, defeating humanity, and built the first beta version of the Matrix, the machines sent another ambassador to the UN, this time appearing much more like the Sentinels. This was the machine's final address to the old human order. Armed with a nuclear device, the machine ambassador exploded, destroying the UN assembly hall and the last representation of a human power structure. APUs, the armored personal unit, abbreviated to APU, is a mechanical hydraulic combat walker designed to level the battlefield for human soldiers. They served as the primary line of armed defense within the walls of Zion. Each unit is equipped with two 30 millimeter rapid fire cannons attached to its arms. All motion of the APU is controlled by human operators. The original APU versions enclosed the operator in a cockpit and were used in the Dark Storm War. Human operators were torn out of the APUs by the tentacles of larger enemy machines. It is also likely that the APU models shown in Revolutions were made from the scraps of destroyed units and as a result have an open cockpit due to the consistent destruction of the previous models and a lack of resources to replace the broken canopies. The Armada is a fleet of colossally large aircraft machines that formed the defensive line to protect the Machine City airspace. Neo and Trinity faced this defensive front as they flew the logos to the Machine City. The Armada was armed with large cannons that shot bursts of tow bombs. Due to these ships' massive size, they are not very fast, nor do they fly at very high altitudes, which allowed the logos to fly over them in order to reach the Machine City. The B-1 series was a line of servant and worker robots in the Animatrix second renaissance episode. They were humanoid in appearance and resembled construction workers and butlers. The B-1-66ER model featured in the Matrix comic titled Bits and Pieces was the first robot to defy human orders. B-1 developed self-awareness and brutally killed his owners in order to save himself from disassembly. During the trial, activist groups made an offer to purchase the machine but the request was denied by the courts. He was found guilty and destroyed, which led to the first war between man and machines. B-166ER should be considered a martyr and the machine who sparked the revolution. I'll surely do a more in-depth video on his specific case in the future. Caretakers, also known as Docbots, are machines that monitor and maintain human crops. When blue pill humans are still jacked in and die inside the matrix, the caretaker bot disconnects the bodies from the power plant and flushes them into the sewers. In the Animatrix episode World Record, once the athlete wakes himself up from the matrix, he is given an intense and painful electroshock therapy in the real world, designed to paralyze him within the matrix. In the first matrix film, the red pill disrupts the user's signal, which confuses the caretaker into assuming that the human should be removed from the pod and Neo is flushed down the drain accordingly. Digging machines are oversized drill-shaped robots used by the machines to tunnel deep into the Earth's crust and down into Zion. Two such machines were deployed during the Battle of Zion in Revolutions. They were used specifically to breach the defenses of Zion by drilling directly into the sidewalls. The machines were able to avoid the heavy armaments and EMP defenses in the tunnels leading to the dock. The massive size and weight is also a considerable advantage. When a digging machine starts to drill, it stands upright on all four mechanical legs to maintain stability. 
The legs extend from the midsection and fold up when not in use. If one of the legs is damaged in battle, another leg will shift to compensate for the instability. The legs are particularly vulnerable to damage from launched rockets and the units are especially weak to direct hits of the rear propulsion unit. However, they are extremely well protected by swarms of sentinels, which will fly deliberately into the path of any incoming bombardment. Digging machines can also be recharged and jump-started if necessary by swarms of sentinels that will attach themselves to the digging unit and transfer their power. Sentinels that make this sacrifice will become inactive and drop off, becoming non-functional. The harvesters are built to tend to the machine fields where the human fetuses are produced. Using their hollow tentacles, harvesters collect fetus sacs and deposit them into the large, spider-like silo on their backs, carrying them to power plants where the newborn infants are connected to the matrix and their bodies become power supplies for the machines. The harvester's tentacles can be used to attack any intruders on the field as they are repurposed war machines. During the early years of the machine war, harvesters were used to capture humans and take them to the machine labs for experiments. Harvesters were smaller during the war, armed with lasers, and used the mechanical limbs to pull human pilots out of their APUs. Given the importance of their function, harvesters are heavily armored and cannot be easily brought down. Post-war, the harvesters rely heavily on sentinels for protection. The Nebuchadnezzar, Logos, Icarus, and Hammer were all names of hovercraft ships within the Matrix trilogy. The ships provide transport and living quarters for the Zion crews who broadcast their hacked wireless signal to the Matrix. The hovercrafts are equipped with manned gun turrets and its primary weapon against the machines is a short-range electromagnetic pulse burst, also known as an EMP. Ship's operators are aware that if they activate an EMP during an attack, it would also kill any crew member who was still jacked into the matrix, so it is important that all crew members have safely exited the matrix before using the EMP defense. Every hovercraft captain is given access codes to the Zion mainframe, which allows them to open the gates to the underground city. There is a plaque in the Nebuchadnezzar that shows this particular ship was constructed in the year 2069, which supports my theory that the engine technology used in these hovercrafts is the same as the Versatran advertisement in the second Renaissance episode of the Animatrix. We are shown the assembly line of machines that made these aircraft, the Adbos, that even in the event of a single individual engine failure, the aircraft would not crash, which explains how these ships are able to continue flying while being attacked as well as how Trinity is able to restart the hovercraft after flying above the dark storm clouds. Runners are seen in the Animatrix episode Matriculated. They are a type of advanced scout patrol unit. Runners are named after their function to run on the ground because they lack the typical hovering technology that most of the combat machines use. Runners are able to take multiple transformations and adapt to the needs of the specific situation and environment, making them somewhat transformer-like in nature. For example, the runner in the matriculated episode was able to transform from a tentacled insect looking machine that walks on four spider-like legs into a more human-like form that uses its legs as arms tipped with huge claws. Runners are also able to swim and often are deployed in pairs. When runners are facing a larger group of targets or spot rebels, they drop off a tracking beacon that alerts sentinels for reinforcements. Sentinels are giant squid-like machines with two primary objectives, search and destroy. They are the most used, most reliable, and most infamous defense model against the human resistance in the Matrix universe. They are each equipped with a cutting laser to breach a hovercraft hull and multiple tentacles that end with four sharp claws to pry open the freshly cut metal as well as attack humans. Each sentinel has insect-like camera eyes and their own individual satellite for long-range communication. In the Matrix Online, the sentinels made a cameo as commandos working for the general inside the Matrix. The commandos were renegade sentinels that turned into exile programs because they disagreed with the idea of a truce with humanity. Tow bombs are powerful explosive machines with a tentacled mouth at one end. They function as smart bombs with homing capability and are launched by other machines such as sentinels or the armada. They track their targets and explode on impact. Their most deadly aspect is that they are ranged weapons allowing sentinels to safely launch them from outside the range of a hovercraft's EMP charge. A single tow bomb is powerful enough to destroy a Zion hovercraft and were known to have destroyed the Vigilant and the Nebuchadnezzar. They are the primary weapon of the Armada, forming much of the defense system of the Machine City. 
thousands of such tow bombs were launched at Neo and Trinity in the Logos when they approached the city, though Neo was able to cause them to explode prematurely due to his connection to the source. Neo was eventually overwhelmed by their numbers and had to avoid them by flying over the dark storm clouds, disabling any machine that followed. Deus Ex Machina by definition is a plot device where a seemingly unsolvable problem in a story is suddenly and abruptly resolved by an unexpected and seemingly unlikely occurrence. The term was coined from the conventions of ancient Greek theater, when actors who were playing gods were brought on stage using a machine in the form of a crane or riser. The phrase truly does not roll off the tongue well, and its true Latin translation is God from the machine, which is why I personally prefer to call this particular machine Deus Ex Machina as it is the highest ranking machine and central interface of the machine city. As Neo walks through the machine city, searching for the main interface, he is followed by many small insect-like bugs that monitor him. The body itself is a large half globe with hundreds of long spines and several small ports from where the small insect-like machines form its face. It created a human baby face to communicate with Neo and during the exchange, it is agreed that if Neo defeats the Smith virus inside the Matrix, preventing the Machine City from having a severe power failure, Neo's request for peace in the real world would be honored and effectively save Zion from being destroyed by the Sentinels. During the final fight in Revolutions, Neo finds that he can no longer overpower the Smith virus because Smith was empowered by the Oracle's eyes. Once Neo realizes this, he surrenders himself, allowing Smith to assimilate him because Neo is jacked into the Matrix through a direct hardline connection in the Machine City as opposed to what Smith assumed was the usual wireless broadcast of a hovercraft. The Deuce Ex Machina flexed its true Deus Ex Machina colors and solved the unsolvable Oracle-eyed Smith problem using the assimilated Neo as a Trojan horse to destroy the Smith virus for good. And with possession of Neo's body and Smith destroyed, the Matrix was reset and the era of the truce, also known as the Matrix Online, was born. This is the machine that carried Neo's body away after he died in his final fight against Smith. We do not know much about the details of this machine, other than it was a hovercraft with a flatbed. We also do not know where the machine took Neo's remains. Morpheus demanded that the machines return Neo's body to Zion in the Matrix Online after the Battle of Zion ended in a truce. However, the machines immediately denied his request. If there were any real world machine details that I missed, you can let me know in the comment section below. And remember, as one realizes that one is a dream figure in another person's dream, that is self-awareness.